Happy Thursday. Um, you guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook and Instagram page with Brushed by Brandy. My name is Brandy. I am a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador and I get to come here live with you guys every Thursday evening and we do a paint project together. Um, and so I want to make you guys a part of a paint project that I've been working on personally and that is we have bought a, an RV that we've been making over and I posted pictures of it recently on my page. But one of the things I think people have the most questions about was painting fabric. And um, I wanted to go through the steps with you and then I'm actually gonna show you the finished product and what it looks like and we'll hopefully get some good camera shots so you can see what it feels like in person. But I'm gonna walk you through the steps to get a nice finish on painted fabric. So um, the piece that I have here for our example actually came out of my RV before our makeover. So, um, anybody who's familiar with RVs knows that they come in these lovely floral fabrics, right? I sense sarcasm. Yeah, I, I don't know who's picking this stuff out, but they need to be fired. Um, <laughs> it seems like all of them, even, even more modern ones than what we have, um, are still hideous fabrics. So there's definitely the, a trend towards making over uh, tiny homes and RVs and with COVID and not being able to vacation right now, a lot of people are getting into the RV world. Um, and so I think this is a very relevant topic right now. So this was actually one of the window boxes and we end up taking these all out of our RV, but some of these fabrics existed other places and I ended up painting them. So it's a great little sample board that I can show you the process and then we'll go check it out, uh, what it actually looks like on the finished product. Okay. So when you're painting fabric, all I recommend that you do is make sure it's clean, you know, as clean as you can get it. You don't need to shampoo it or anything, but if it's got bubble gum stuck on it, you want to make sure that's taken off of it and don't put bubble gum on your fabric. Um, and then the materials that you need are actually pretty, pretty slim. There's not a lot that you need. You're going to use your Dixie Belle paint, whatever color that you choose. Um, best staying wax and clear is what I like. A lot of people also use the um, easy peasy spray wax for this, but I like the best staying wax because it actually gives it a really much more softer feel. Whereas the easy peasy spray wax has a more matte feel. It doesn't give it that same softness. So we're gonna use um, best staying wax and clear. Um, we're gonna use a lot of water. Can you actually hand me that Mr. Bottle? Really? I gotta work? I know, I'm gonna make you move. You guys, my husband Sean is here is to this, answer Jasmine any size? questions that you guys have. Um, a lot of water, a lot of water goes into painting fabric. And then I've got out a few brushes and that's because I want to show you the difference. I think brushes definitely make a difference. I've got out my good Dixie Belle brushes. I love to paint with these, but the truth is that the, uh, a fabric project is really hard on a brush. And so um, I don't know that I'd choose uh, one of your Dixie Belle brushes unless you know that it could come out not in the same condition that it started in. It's never gonna be as good because you're gonna be really hard on it. So I actually think, uh, and then I've got some natural bristle brushes and I usually choose natural bristle brushes when I want a um, more rigidity and I'm gonna be doing a more rigorous project. So um, I think I'm actually just gonna use one of the premium chip brushes for this. Um, so I left this side unpainted so you can see some of my fabrics and I'm going to bring this in because I want to show you guys some of the texture in here. Tell me when I get too close. Too close. Too close. Yeah, <laughs> the knee or the fabric. <laughs> um, so this fabric here is kind of a velour fabric. Maybe, maybe I'd call it a chenille actually. So a lot of people say like um, painting textured fabrics is a lot harder than painting a smoother fabric which is like, like what I've got here, which is more of a damask. Um, it's just a damask. It doesn't have a lot of texture in it. I really, can you get close in on the different types of fabric? Cause I definitely want to show the different types. And then up here is a, is a traditional upholstery fabric where it's got a lot of, um, it's got a, a, a weave to it, but it doesn't have a raised texture like this fabric does here. So as far as fabrics go, I'm going to say, this is our easiest one to paint. This is somewhere in the middle, and this is gonna be your harder, fa hardest fa type of fabric to paint. So if you're looking at purchasing a chair or you've got one and you wanna make it over, if it's got a smooth fabric on it, that's definitely gonna be an asset to you. If you've got a velvet or a chenille or something like that, it's gonna take you more work to get it to where it doesn't feel crunchy or uh, like you don't wanna sit on it. It's possible, but it's more work. Can you paint pleather? Yeah, 
Absolutely. Most definitely you can paint pleather. So, no? You probably, yeah, you probably <laughs> want to use Dixie Belle Slick Stick, which is a gripping primer because if it's, if it's pleather and it's uh, intact, you know how pleather can peel and expose fabric underneath? It's got a fabric bottom to it. Um, the fabric will take the paint okay without, but, but the actual pleather, it's like a vinyl, um, has nothing to grip onto. So yes, you can. It actually, uh, and I'm going to say this a lot as we go through this project tonight, it comes out feeling like a leather when you're done. These fabrics even are going to feel more like a leather than anything when I'm done. Um, so here's what I will say. It takes a lot of paint to paint fabric. You're basically taking your paint and you're going to turn it into a dye using the water. Which is right in line with what Dana was just saying. Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing with it. So it does, it does tend to take a lot of paint. I'll show you guys when we go into my RV um, how much fabric huh? in there I painted. Yeah, we're going, we're making a field trip tonight. It's field trip night. Oh. Did everyone bring their permission slip? Everyone choose a buddy. Um, we are going to go over to our RV and I'll show you how much fabric I painted. Um, it took about a full 16 ounce of paint and I didn't do a whole lot of fabric in there. So just know that you want to make sure you've got plenty of paint. So I'm choosing Dixie Belle Hurricane Gray. And I chose this uh, because the uh, tones in our RV are grays and taupes and beiges in that family. And then I also thought it was a good color to cover up. Um, this is a green here and then cover up some of this pattern up here too. If I wanted to try to make this go white, it would probably be more challenging. So I want to cover up. Brittany so says she doesn't have a permission slip, but she has wine. Okay, I'll take, yeah. I'll accept it. Yeah. Which your parents don't know won't hurt them, right? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, there's padding on this, but this is just, um, it's just gathered over the piece of wood. So it doesn't have any padding underneath. I'm gonna take a little bit of water. We'll start over here in the middle. And I'm gonna saturate that and I'm gonna work the paint in. And then I'm gonna add water to it after it's on there and that, dilutes the paint on there and it's just going to let it soak into that fabric too. So you can, you can get your fabric a little bit damp, but it does more if you spray the paint once it's on the fabric, because then the paint's going to seep into that fabric. <laughs> Robin says she feels like she's at her house since the late night slumber party yeah. in your live last night. <laughs> I know, like, you haven't even ever left yet. We've just been hanging out for 24 hours straight. I went live at, like, midnight last night. I liked, uh... Yeah, sorry, Jason. I don't want to get in trouble. Someone someone called it uh, Bedtime with Brandy. I kind of like it, because I'm a night owl. And we painted last night, late last night. I did a, a project with uh, Redesign with Prima Transfers. Came out really cute. I'll be posting sneak peeks of that pretty well, soon. Well, I was watching Care Bears. Yeah. Or what was it you said uh, I was Grey's, watching? Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. We've never watched Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Neither one of us has ever seen an episode. But they were harassing Sean for watching Grey's Anatomy because he was in the living room watching TV. So I'm. you can see why I would want to use a less lesser quality brush than my good Dixie Belle brushes. Because I'm working this Just into, grinding it in. Yeah, the fibers of that fabric. It is like a dye. And you've got to work it into the fibers. So this fabric up here is interesting because it's got kind of a texture to it. So over here, I've got one coat on it. This is definitely going to take two coats on this type of fabric. You can still see the pattern through it. It lightened up a little bit, but I can still see some of the color variation. So I'm putting a first coat on it up here and we'll go over there and do a second coat. But it's this pattern fabric definitely needs two coats. The camera wants to go in and out of focus for something on that fabric. Yeah. Must be that sheet. This is a gorgeous fabric. Surprised I haven't been asked about that. Oh, there's nothing behind here, you guys. It's an unfinished piece that I'm trying to get keep paint off of because it's been stripped. Oh, man. So a lot, a lot, a lot of paint, a lot of water, and work that paint into your fabric. Work it, girl. Okay. So let's come down here and let's work on this textured fabric a little bit. It's going to be the same process. This has a gather to it, which would be similar to like a tufting or something. It's not ideal, you guys. If you get a choice, some things I would avoid when paint, you know, not avoid. It's still possible. It's just more, it's just harder. Is tufting, uh, gathers, 
um, pleats, um, textured fabrics, things like that. The more of them you have, Hello. the more challenging your fabric painting project is going to be. Sorry, just a couple of the comments. There one now? Well. Oh. So I'm just, I'm spraying my fabric before, working my paint in, spraying it after, working it in again. So uh, Brittany's come up with a new show for me, Primetime. It's called uh, Stripping with Sean. Oh, that sounds terrible. Yeah. I, don't, I think the ratings are going to suck on that it's one. It's already been canceled. Yeah. Yeah, we tried that. It's been canceled. Nobody paid for it and they still want money back. Yeah. Didn't, that did not fly with anybody. That's and then the other question is uh, that noise in the background. Oh, my, yeah. my friend. I timed him this morning. It's every uh, like 12 seconds. Who's watched Moana? Yep, that's guys, right. Hey, hey, that's our rooster, our, our neighbor's rooster. We don't have a rooster because why? That's our neighbor's rooster. We, we call gave him, him to the neighbor? We call him Hey, hey. <laughs> okay, so this fabric right here is an absolute dream to paint. It doesn't have a raised nap on it. That's that would be a fabric term more than a painting term, but it doesn't have a raised nap on it. Um, it just has a little bit of a light woven texture. It's a dream to paint. This is so much easier than either one of these up here at the top. Ooh, a nap. Nap. Um, I can still see the pattern through it, um, which I actually like. It looks nice. I've just changed the color of it. So we, we didn't keep any of these window boxes in our RV. Um, it's a great sample board, but we actually ended up taking all these window boxes down. And, that, and some fabrics like that, when you're working in an RV space, there are some fabrics you can just eliminate, but there are some that you can't take out without um, you know, doing a real big project. And we were just doing a cosmetic project. So that painted remarkably easy compared to either one of these fabrics across the top. That's the smoother fabric that's along the side. I'm going to come do this little spot in the middle. This over here is fairly dry. I did this earlier so that I could show you putting a second coat on. And I think we'll actually, um, we're going to show, I'm going to show waxing inside the RV. That's where it's dry. It's got sufficient coats on it. That's where you'll really get a feel for what it's going to, what it's going to feel like and look like in a realistic setting. So we have a couple of questions as far as uh, making sure we're okay if we're involved in the fires. Uh, we are not, thankfully, you guys. Thank you for asking. I've gotten uh, so many people asking if we we're close to the fires. You'll see when we go outside tonight what the air looks like. The air quality is terrible. It's smoky and hazy, but we're still about two hours away from anything that's actively burning. So we are remarkably lucky because we do live kind of rural in California. Everybody knows that our state just burns year after year after year. Um, okay, so let's come over here and let's put a second coat on this. The process is going to be exactly the same. Um, and I would say, I, I don't think there's really any way around a second coat. I have not found a fabric yet that I don't need to put two coats on yet. Even this here, I still have some exposed fibers in here that I would come back and just fill it in with a second coat. But this especially, the, the printed pattern on here um, is harder to cover. This is a more solid color fabric, easier to cover. These are great things to consider when you're considering, you know, like I said, if you get to go pick the chair versus one you already have in your house, just know that if it's got a, a, a pattern on it with different colors in it, that's gonna definitely take you more than one coat to cover. Same process. Lots of water, working that paint in. And this second coat, I can definitely tell the difference on. I'm getting full coverage. It's taking away, I can't see that ugly floral anymore. It's gone. Bye bye, 1990s. You were good while you lasted, but you gotta go. Although I take the 1990s over 2020, that's for sure. Oh, amen to that. Okay, so I'll just do about half on here. And that's probably enough to show you guys 
just just it's a lot of arm work it's a lot of arm work um who was i talking to oh it was one of the dixie bell retailers was thinking of doing a couch and i looked at it and said you're gonna hate that couch so much by the time you're done because you it's a lot of working that paint into the fabric a lot of it it works great but plan on it being a lot of arm work so now just stepping back for a second did you prep the fabric uh no just making sure it's clean if it's got any um you know somebody spilled I don't know. <laughs> what, what did your kids spill on your fabric? Just, Everything. Just wipe it down. I, I wouldn't shampoo it at all unless it was just disgusting. And, I, and then you may, may want to just replace it. I don't know. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, just make sure it's clean. Just make sure it's clean. You really have to judge that because you're not, you don't want to paint over if it's, if it's disgusting. You're not trying to hide that. Make sure it's clean. Um, you know, the fabrics. So here's one thing to consider. This is a window box. You're not going to touch this very often. It doesn't, it's not something that gets a lot of finger wear, you know, dirt on it. Whereas it's, if it's your sofa or an armchair, it's probably been used a little bit more. I vacuum it well. You don't want cat hair all over it or, um, trying to think of what other situations there might be. Okay. So it was asked, obviously, what it feels like once the, once you're done with it this process. It feels like leather. You're and not... I was a skeptic. Sean knows. I'm total skeptic about painting some fabric, but. It sounds silly to paint, put paint on your fabric, but Dixie Belle is a water-based paint. So it's no different. You guys got to think about like, if you were to take your sofa and dip dye it in a fabric dye, it's a water-based dye. That's yeah. what you're creating is a water-based dye out of the paint. It's no different. That's the feeling that you're going to give it. Saying hi from Cairo. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so the next step. I can't on, complain about your fabrics, and we're gonna go inside the RV in a minute, and we'll do more of this. Is gonna be your wax. So this fabric right here, again, this is gonna be a dream to wax. It's a smoother fabric. This is gonna stink to wax. How do I know? Because I waxed a whole bunch of it. This is what's all over my RV. Is this textured fabric? Not with these gathers in it though. It's smooth. So just another really quick question. As far as a sanding sponge, do you pretty much use a sanding sponge on everything you yeah, touch? Yeah, I do. Either the sanding sponge or the um, surf prep rad pads. I don't have, have any. Oh, do I have any in here? Let's see if they sent me. And just to throw a couple things while you're looking for that, Kimber, no, it doesn't rub off on your clothing. No, it doesn't. The wax is going to cure and harden, so it doesn't. And you are going to work it so much into that fabric. I'm going to show you guys what I did to work Not it. Not like into it flakes the off or anything like that. No, it stays soft. Wax stays soft. Um, um, I lost my train of thought. We're going to work it so much into this fabric, and I'm going to show you what I did in my RV to make a textured fabric feel smooth. Well, let's go ahead and do this smooth section right here, which is a really easy section because um, it doesn't take quite as much. So for this, I would put my wax on, and this is clear wax. This is a Besting Wax and Clear. It does look white in the container and it goes on white. I had mixed in some older wax on top of my new container of wax. Mine's a hot mess, so ignore that <laughs> if you can. It's a hot mess. Yeah, everything about no it's big a hot deal. Mess. So it looks white going on. I need to work this wax into my paint, okay? This is too much wax, too. I don't want this much sitting on top of the surface. What I want to do basically is massage it in so that the porous paint absorbs what it needs to of the wax that seals it and then anything that's residual left sitting on the top i'm going to take that back off i don't want it sitting on the top i want it uh, massaged into that paint it's that's the same thing when you're waxing a piece of furniture you just want enough wax so that the paint absorbs it you don't want it sitting on top of your paint that's not what wax should be doing so if you were going to do this like on a vinyl or even pleather would you still throw wax on the top yeah i would I would because the paint itself dries to a really matte chalky feel. The wax on the top just brings it back to that soft supple feel of leather. It feels like leather. If it, it's that supple feeling, it's wipeable. Um, you know, I would feel much better about my kids um, spilling food on this fabric with a wax coating on it because I can come back and wipe it off. All right, enough talking from yeah. me. I want you to go ahead and work while I sit here and watch. So I'm taking another natural bristle brush. This one's, it's a more dense brush. It's a fuller brush. This one's by Redesign with Prima. This is their, what, two inch wax brush, stencil brush. 
And I'm going to take this and I'm going to work this wax into my paint. And you can see how it takes it from having this white to now I've got it worked into my paint. But here I go again, where I had to work the paint into the fabric and now I'm having to work the wax into the fabric. So like- plan, Just getting into those pores. Yep, plan on your arms. Like your arm is gonna be, I sit, I sit. It's gonna take it's like a while. like a pitcher. So now when I feel this, um, it doesn't have any residue. I can come back and I can all, you know, buff. I can buff my wax, whatever's sitting on the top which is minimal because I just worked it all into my fabric. Now I'm going to bring this close and I'm going to show you guys. This is the only portion I've waxed. This is what paint up here. So ignore this part right here, but let's look at this up close and see how well we can see it. Okay. This is only one coat of paint too. I would have liked to put two on here. So you can't, you know, I've got a little bit of places where my fabric's a little, um, thin like I can kind of see the white peeking through and I needed a second coat on here so I plan on doing a second coat but this is like I want to pick do we have a volunteer from the audience who wants to come feel this no nope. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to call someone out of our live studio audience to come touch this because it's feel it feels touchable it doesn't feel like I would not hesitate to sit on a chair that had this on there can we make it like the price is right and the person comes down all crazy yeah okay. dress like a chicken Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. How about I just sound like one? Hurry up. It's on your side of the closet. Oh, yeah. Oh. So. Oh, that's nice. I know. See? Well, I like it's, stuff in the RV, it's a, too. It so surprises it's... me. It surprises me. But this this is an easy this is an easy choice here because this is that smoother fabric. This is where it gets into more complex because all this nap that's in the fabric, you've got to loosen it back up. I'm going to go show you how we do that. You guys want to have it head over to my RV right now? Not really. Well, we're going to. I know no. we've spent a lot of time in there. We don't want to be in there at all. Um, so I don't know. Can you guys see the texture in this fabric up close? Uh, right. Hold on. There we go. For that one, I scoot scoot the piece over this way and then down, and then to your left, and then no, I'm just kidding. Okay, well, sit still. There we go. Does it help? There is the money shot. Yep, that's like perfect. That? Yeah. Can you go down a little bit? I don't want to see you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's like a puppy Hello! Theater, huh? <laughs> Maybe I'll keep this. Man, this woman keeps following me. <laughs> so that's an that's an easy choice for me right there. Honestly, I don't think this painted version feels that different from what oh, that yeah, fabric yeah. felt like unpainted. It's still got that same kind of smooth feel. Let's make a deal. It wasn't prices, right? When oh, you're running down with yeah. the chicken soup. I know, but they ran back to back, right? Didn't you watch Let's Make a Deal and then is, wow. prices right? Come no, on. no, I was probably doing homework or something. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's put this down. Let's go over to the RV. Let's wax some textured fabric and I'll show you what it looks like in an actual realistic setting. I'm gonna bring my wax brushes. I'm not gonna bring the paint brush because we're not gonna paint anymore. Oh, I have a nice tan on my hand. All right, thank you. All right, Sean's gonna do some camera work. You guys, I'm, huh? I am gonna point out the skies, what the skies look like in California. Is it blue? The sky uh, is blue. Yeah. It's actually orange. All right, we're going mobile. All right, ladies and gentlemen, okay. hold oh. your hats. Oh. We're taking the show on the road. Okay, hold on. I gotta try to do two two phones here. I know, I'm gonna walk Hello. Right Bah! As I hit the door. <laughs> okay, so first I'll, I want to show, I'm going to show you guys the sun. Huh? Oh. Come over here. Where are we going? Can you see it up there? No, it's behind the trees. I know, you can see it better. Sorry guys, crappy yard right now. <laughs> yeah, field trip. So you can see looking It's right behind, sky, you can kind of see. It's really orange out here. It's just not, it's like not my tan. nice at all. It's, um, all right, let's go. We have blue skies directly above, but everything else is just a haze of Smoke. So this is our RV. Our RV is a, a year 2000 um, Fleetwood Storm. So it's not super nice. It's not a, you know, it didn't cost us tens of thousands of dollars. What? Um, the outside of it looks worse than the inside. And we've slowly been working on making this over. 
You gotta, yeah. There's the latch that you. Okay. So let's go inside, and I'll show you guys what we've done so far. Nothing like walking with two cameras and then still trying to keep my balance. It's like a good Friday. You may have to turn off the air conditioner in here. It's loud. If you go back there, you can flip the switch. It's a dip switch, a selection switch. What do you call Up. It? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got words. It's one of the. There you go. Flip it all the way up to where it says off. I know it's just technical words. Okay, so it's going to get hot in here pretty quick. Um, and then I'll let you pick. I'm also trying to go slow so I don't, you know. Make you guys want to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the main piece of the fabric. Never mind the painted. wire. This the... is that same green fabric that was on the wood window boxes. This is the, was the same green fabric. So this is number one, an area that nobody's going to sit on or touch or anything, but it's got that texture in it that made it a challenge. So let me show you how I cured that. So what I did to really work in my wax, I did the same process where I took my besting wax and clear. And let me, is this a good spot? Yeah, go, you go now. Okay, go you go now. And I just brushed it on. And there I am back again with that white wax. Let me get a little bit more and it looks white going on. So then I need to work this into the texture of that fabric. At the same time, I'm going to brush it so that when I'm brushing it, it's loosening up all the fibers in the fabric. Um, so it's, you know, they're not gonna be crusty because I'm gonna brush them out. So what I did is I took a nylon scrub brush, which is, this is just a little nylon scrub brush. And I took that wax. brushed it into the fabric and that just makes it so it's got that smooth leathery feel it's not going to take the texture out completely but it helps me I can by the brushing loosens up the fibers so they don't they can't stay crusty when you're brushing it like that I just it's, realized why you have a mad right hook yeah it's like <laughs> it's almost like a sandy I'm not taking the paint off at all. I can't see the green fabric by doing that, but I am able to work that wax in and make this fabric super touchable. So now if somebody does, you know, this is kind of an odd spot to be touching, but it is around our banquette too. And I did the same process down here. So let me show you guys that. Find a good spot. We're here. This is that same fabric, that same green velour fabric is all around here. Now this is a spot where if you're sitting, you're gonna put your arm here all the time, right? And you don't want it to be scratchy and uncomfortable. And then it carries all the way down here and wraps around. And I did this all with that same process. So same thing, I took some of the this besting wax and clear, two coats of paint on here already. And once it was dry, Besting wax, and then I I scrubbed it in, and it just make the wax just makes it smooth, and then brushing out those fibers makes it so they're not restricted by the paint anymore. And so up here, same thing, where your arm's gonna rest. One arm, Popeye. I'm telling you guys, you're gonna hate the fabric, but. How else? I would have had to take all of these off, all this off, and I could have put a new fabric, wrapped it. This was the easier choice for me. Um, it didn't take me as much time. It took me a lot of elbow grease. And then up here, I mean, I could have probably like tried to glue a strip of fabric on here, but it would have gotten weird. So I just think this was the easier choice to just paint the fabric. And it's clear wax. It's it clear looks wax. white but it, it's clear. It is. Uh, this is Dixieville Besting Wax in Clear. It says clear on the package. It looks white in the container. Dries totally clear. Little trick about the white or the clear wax. It does look white in the container. So same thing right here where your arm's going to rest. I took it, 
applied a little bit of wax and now I need to work it into the fabric. And then that's loosened up the fibers. It's, it's nice and I don't soft. think you've done that enough. I'm going to come back in 20 <laughs> Here, minutes. Let me do more. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a little bit like Cinderella-ish. The before? <laughs> but, I mean, the results I'm, are something I'm really happy with. And just, the, I think, the brushing of the scrub brush. So you can put your wax on with a, with a regular brush. But with a textured fabric like this, it's so much harder and I'm not going to get that same brushing effect of loosening those fibers back up and working the wax in at the same time. So I found this, I could just wipe it on and then work it in with the scrub brush. Now, if you're going to use, uh, put this on like a pleather or a vinyl or something, you probably don't want to use that scrub brush you were just no, using? No, yes, no. I'm talking about uh, um, textured fabrics, you guys, are, are going to be a little bit different. Don't be that abrasive with it. It's, it doesn't, it's, you're not going to have to work in the, fa the, the wax as much. You're not going to have to loosen the fibers back up. That's what I'm talking here. I'm talking textured fabrics. So the process we did back in my workspace with just the window cornice on that smooth fabric section, um, you saw, I was able to just massage my wax in with just a brush like this. Massage. Just like waxing a piece of furniture, buff it out with a rag. That's it on a smooth piece of fabric, it's much, much, much simpler. I wanted to show you guys that it's not impossible to paint a textured fabric though. It is very much possible to paint a textured fabric. Smooth fabrics are much easier if you've got the option. So that's kind of it, you guys. That's everything on painting fabric. Lots of water. Think twice as much paint as you think you're gonna need is what you're actually gonna use. It's a lot of paint because you're making it into a dye for your fabric. Um, and then I like the clear wax. You can use the spray wax, but like I said, it's a more matte feeling that it dries to. So I prefer the, the supple feeling of, um, of the actual uh, besting wax. Um, so while we're in here. I also like that in this small quarters, there's no smell. Well, it smells like smoke in here right now. Yeah, Besting Wax is a water-based wax, you guys, so it doesn't have a strong, uh, usually oil-based products or what have a really strong odor. I'm opening these so we have better light. Better so that we see the side light. of the workshop? Yeah. Um, no, I wanted to show, can you catch the sheen on the painted cabinets? Like the Martin or the Charlie? Yeah. Which one? Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> can you Did catch... You so all of the cabinets in here were painted with Dixie Belle paint. This is sawmill gravy, and I did the kitchen area Oops. in driftwood. But I wanted to show you how nicely they came out. Um, so a lot of people redo like tiny homes, tiny home living. This is actually meant to still be mobile. We still want to be able to drive it, you know, which means I can't put like plants and pictures on the wall and things that'll fall. Um, the window coverings even we replaced so those those window boxes that we were painting I replaced just with uh, window blinds and then they'll magnet latch To the window frame itself what? to stay in place. So I don't need those cornice boxes anymore. That's why we're not using them So those are those are cordless blinds up there. But now are those uh, those wires hanging down? Is that uh, an added feature? What, I'm just at nobody asked. I'm, yeah, it's 12 volt <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just it's a cool. No big deal. Uh, we ordered lights. Actually, we're plugged we in. No, don't, 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 don't touch the two together. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. Um, we ordered lights on Amazon because they were, this is, this is, this is 1990s at its finest. The year 2000 is when this was built. It had ugly sconces. So we're going to replace those. They haven't come in the mail yet. So this oh, is. Oh, we're doing a walkthrough tour? Well, no, not all of it, but I just really want to show what I did with the paint in here. That's a really nice fan right above it. Just saying. Yeah, that's what everybody's looking at. So this is Dixie Bell paint and driftwood, but really, and then uh, sprayed with gator hide and a smooth, nice finish on on RV cabinets. Oh yeah. So anyway, most of this was done using Dixie Bell paint products. Uh, the paint, gator hide, wax on the fabrics, um, and that was pretty much it. And a lot of elbow grease, you guys. So anyway, I'm going to pop off. Um, we're going to go RVing tonight. What? Yeah. What? Not. We're just going to drive this around yeah, the neighborhood. We're, we're going to go get some, you know, I'm excited to go food. To, I'm excited to have it done. 
Um, so anyway, I'm going to pop off. I will come back next Thursday and we will do another paint project with you. But I hope you guys, I hope that makes you feel more confident that fabric is totally paintable. It's no different than creating a water-based dye is what you're basically doing with the paint. And then the wax just makes it feel like a soft, you know, we've got leather furniture in here. This same soft, supple feel is what it feels like with the wax on the fabric especially when you've got a smooth fabric. This is not painted, this is actually leather. But just, you know, I want you to envision that feeling. That's how it's gonna feel on a smooth fabric with the wax over top. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, add them to the thread after we get off. If you tag me, I'm more likely to see it. You can just do the at symbol and brush by Brandy. You guys can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, also at brush by Brandy. I put a link in the top of the post if you guys need to order any of the things that you saw tonight, uh, the besting wax, the paints that we used, um, you know, some of our brushes are on there. Um, you can also use that link to find a retailer near you if you want to go in and check out any of the products. So um, you guys have a great weekend. I will catch you guys next Thursday. Can you catch this one? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Can you? Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking for where I need to. Oh, end. Bye, guys.